So for the exercise today, day five, we're gonna learn to model doors and windows in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when we model a door, um, what we really wanna pay attention to is we wanna pay attention to the opening size that we need to create in the wall. Remember that a door is gonna be made up of a frame as well as the door leaf itself. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume that the opening of the door overall, including the frame, is gonna be three feet wide. So I'm just going to start by drawing a three foot line right here. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle up to represent the height of the door using the line tool. And then I can just use the R key, the rectangle tool in order to close this in. So now what we've done is we've created a door opening right here. And again, depending on if you want the actual swing width of the door to be three feet wide, or if you want it to be a little bit smaller, that's going to affect the direction that you're going to offset this. Because what we want to do is we basically want to create the frame by selecting three edges on the outside. So I just did a click, shift click, shift click. Then I'm going to tap the F key to offset these, and I'm going to offset them whatever the thickness of my frame is going to be. In this case, I'm just going to say two inches, which may or may not be exactly right, but it's close enough for what we're trying to do right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line in here and a line in here in order to fill this in. So now I have two pieces of geometry, right? I've got the door frame and I've got the door leaf. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to push pull the door frame back to whatever the thickness we need it to be. Um, a lot of the time, I'll just make this the thickness of my wall. So in this case, we'll say our wall is going to be three and five eighths of an inch thick. And actually, this is doing something I want you to pay attention to. So notice how sometimes when you push pull things in SketchUp backwards like this, um, SketchUp makes them hollow, right? So I wanted to push pull it this way, and it was going to make it hollow. Now, I could just push pull it forward, but it's still going to be hollow right here. However, when it's making things hollow like this, if you tap the control key, what it's going to do is it's going to put you in create new face mode. And so when you do that, it's going to create this without leaving the face off of the front side of this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in three and five eighths or whatever the thickness of your wall is going to be just like this. So now I've got my door frame. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the E key and I'm going to erase out this um, leaf for just a second. So I'm going to take this whole thing, right click on it, and I'm going to make it a component and we'll call it door frame. You can, if you want, three foot by seven foot, put in the, um, the actual dimensions of the door itself. But now what I want to do is I want to draw the door that goes inside of the frame. And so to do that, I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle on the backside right here. So I'm just going to draw this rectangle, and then I'm going to push pull it a little bit, and I'm going to give it a little bit of thickness. And in this case, I'm not actually 100% sure how thick a door would be, so we're just going to say two inches right here. So we're just going to push pull this two inches like this. And then I'm going to take that whole thing. I'll do a shift click to deselect the frame. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to call this door leaf three foot by seven foot like this. So now I've got a door leaf in here. Well, the cool thing about this is um, because we've set this up level with this back edge right here, we could take it and rotate it um, in order to simulate the door actually being open and closed. We're not going to worry too much about that just yet. And then if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could model out something like a, um, like a doorknob. And so we can just create a guide. So I'm just going to say that this doorknob is going to be three foot six inches high. So I'm going to click in here, click on this tape measure tool, and I'm just going to create a guide. Remember to tap the control key so that you're in create guide mode. But then I just want to create a guide that's three foot, six inches high, or however high you want your doorknob to be. And in this case, I accidentally put that on the frame when I want it to be based on the door. But then I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to draw a circle. So we'll say it has a radius of one inch. And then I'm just going to use the push pull and the scale tools in order to just kind of detail this out a little bit. I'm not looking to be ultra precise. I just want to push pull this out, use the scale tool to kind of scale it in. I'm going to push pull it out again. And again, I mean, you could try to model this based on an actual like knob if you wanted to. Generally, in that case, I recommend that you go into the 3D warehouse and look for something like that. But um, you can come in here and rough this out really easily. Notice how in this case, I want to push pull this right here um, in order to create this face. But then I want to tap control to go into create new face mode. 
like this so that I leave that piece of geometry. That's going to allow me to take this face and scale it in like this. And you don't have to be ultra detailed on something like this. Nobody really pays that much attention to doorknobs in your models anyway, unless you're trying to like actually model out a doorknob. But then I'm going to take this whole thing, I'm going to make a component, and I'm going to call it knob right here. And so from then, from there, all I want to do is just select both of these, and I want to put them in a group so that the door and the knob are in the same group. That way, if I was to take this door, and let's say I wanted to create something that's actually showing the door kind of swung open a little bit. Because the knob is in the same group as the leaf, that means that I can rotate this open like this, and the knob's going to go with the door. So that's a simple way to create a door. You could come in here and add like trim around the outside or something like that. We're not going to worry about that for this video. All right, so next up, we want to model a couple different kinds of windows. Um, and you'll do a lot of window modeling if you do any kind of like exteriors or anything like that. But again, we want to start by drawing a rectangle that's the size of our opening. So I'm going to draw a three foot line here, four foot line here, and then I'll just use the rectangle tool in order to close this in. So again, we've got our general shape right here. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to use the offset tool and I'm going to offset this in whatever the outside piece of the frame is supposed to be. For now, I'm just going to delete out this extra edge. But now I'm going to push pull this to the thickness of whatever I want my window to be. So in this case, we're going to say this is going to be maybe like a four inch wall or something like that. And so with the windows, once I create something like this, I usually like to go ahead and just group it. I'm not too worried about a component at the moment. Um, I just want to keep this so the geometry is not going to merge. And so in this case, we're going to create a window that slides like this. And again, a lot of the time when you're creating windows, you don't need to get ultra complex with it, right? Um, you're basically drawing something that indicates a window. Um, that's going to be like a 3D representation of a style. If you want to get ultra detailed, I almost recommend you go into the 3D warehouse and look for like sliding window or something like that. And there's actual like windows from manufacturers in here, like these Milgard windows that you can bring in to your models that are dynamic. So um, unless you're creating something like super custom, um, this is a fast, easy way to create these. And if you need to get more complex, use something from the warehouse. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this in here like this. And again, just notice that I'm basically just drawing a rectangle around based on the midpoints of these edges in here. And then I'm just going to offset this in, and we're going to say that this is going to have a thickness of an inch. And again, I'm not 100% sure how close that is to the real world, but we're not going to worry about it too much for right now. So we're just going to push pull this out, and I'm going to go ahead and leave a little bit of a recess in here. So I'm just going to push pull this out to one inch right here. And so what I've done is I've created one slider that goes in here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take this, I'm going to right click on it, and for this one I'm going to make it a component. So the reason I'm going to make it a component, I'm just going to call this slider horizontal, is that way I can make a copy of this, so I can use the move tool in copy mode. I'm going to pick up this corner right here, and I'm going to create a copy that aligns with this corner right here. So. We've got this in here. Now I just want to double click inside of it and add the glass. And so to do that, we can just double click in here, use the rectangle tool and click on one corner, then move up and click on the other corner right here. And a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll double click on that and I'll make it a group just so that it's not merged with the rest of this geometry. Well, now we could come in here and we could add materials really quickly. So if I come in here, I could just add maybe like a dark material here double click on the inside, then I'm going to triple click in order to select all of this geometry on the slider frame. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this material to that. And then I'm going to select this window and I'm just going to add a glass material to it. So we could go down to our glass and mirrors and we could use either a gray or a blue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the gray right here. So that's a simple slider window. And so now let's create a vertical slider. So to start off, we're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to draw a rectangle and we're going to say that this is going to be three feet comma four feet, right? That's going to be the size of the window. We're going to start with the same thing, which is offsetting this in um, to whatever our depth needs to be. In this case, we're going to say one inch. We're going to push pull this, the depth of our wall right here. 
we're going to make this a group. And this time we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to tap the left arrow key to lock it to this axis. We're going to draw a rectangle that's like this, this time. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to offset this in like we did before. So one inch. But in this case, I'm going to take this and I'm going to draw a mullion on the inside. So, and so basically what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line that's a half inch right here. And then a line that's one inch right here. And this is basically going to make up the interior mullion that we have in here. Then we're going to do the same thing vertically, right? So I'm going to draw a line across here. And one other way that I've done this before is I've also selected these edges and used the move tool in copy mode to just quickly copy them. So you could also copy these edges like this, but then we're going to erase out our extra using the erase tool. So tap the E key. I'm going to go ahead and erase the lines around the edges right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete out these faces for the moment. And I'm going to push pull this to a thickness of an inch right here. And again, remember that we want to take this whole thing, we want to make it a component. In this case, we're going to call this vertical slider. That way, we're going to be able to create a copy right here. So now we've got our top and our bottom window piece. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my window panes real quick. So again, it's really simple to do. Just draw a rectangle. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to click on the option to reverse faces. Then I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to make it a group. Well then, it's really easy to use the move tool in copy mode to create copies there and there, like this. And then for this kind of window, I generally like to add some trim or something like that because right now it looks just a little bit weird. So um, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to draw a rectangle around the outside. I'm going to assume that I'm going to have like a four inch piece of trim around the outside. So I'm just going to draw or offset this by tapping the F key and clicking and offset that outward. And then I'm just going to push pull this out, whatever the thickness of the trim is going to be. We're going to say maybe like five, eight, five eighths or something like that in this case. But then we make this a group. And notice how I made a mistake in here. When I created copies of this, I didn't make these components and I should have because they're repeating. So what I should have done is I should have right clicked on this, done a make component, and I should have called this glass pane. That way, when I added the material to it, it would change on all of them instead of me having to add it to four different pieces inside of my model. So I'll make the link for the next video available on this page as soon as I have it done. In the meantime, remember that you can go to the sketchupessentials.com slash 30 days in order to download these example files. So I think I'm falling behind on my competition with SketchUp. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do that to help us pass SketchUp before Basecamp. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.